Basketball Arena will be the fourth largest population center in the state of Wyoming. The fans have flocked to the Arena Auditorium for today's championship game of the Women's National Invitation Tournament. Championship basketball from Laramie, Wyoming. Only six women's college basketball teams are still playing, and two of those teams will meet here today to decide the title of the Women's National Invitation Tournament. Hello, I'm Thad Anderson, joined today by Tracy Warren. And Tracy, today it's a matchup of the Big Ten paying a visit to the Mountain West Conference. Two teams enjoying their best seasons in the history of the program, Wisconsin and Wyoming. Young teams doing it without a senior in the starting lineup. Rockin' tip time is next for the women's NIT championship game. Forty-eight teams started in the WNIT bracket and two remain, Wisconsin and Wyoming. Here today for the championship, the Badgers on the road after winning a couple of nights ago over Western Kentucky. Head coach Lisa Stone, four seasons at Wisconsin, 56 and 63 overall record, but she's taken a big chunk out of the wins this year at a 23 and 12 mark so far in the 06 07 campaign. Across the way is the head coach of the homestanding team, Joe Ligurski, a graduate of Wyoming, spent 12 years coaching under Elaine Elliott at Utah, now in four seasons, 78 and 48 here at Wyoming. Take a look at the starting lineups today. A couple of talented teams, both sides of the ledger. Jolene Anderson, first team all Big Ten for her Badgers. Raylan Delia will be the point guard. Janice Banks, Mariah Dunham, and Danielle Ward. On the flip side, it's Jody Bowlerjack, Dominique Sisk, Hannah Zavek, she's a first team all Mountain West Conference performer. Ustena Pojemska and Elizabeth Disson on the starting lineup today for the Cowgirls of Wyoming. There are the fives that will match up for the championship game of the WNIT. Joining us on the sidelines and in the crowd today, current WNBA player Jamie Carey. Jamie Carey with us today to help capture some of the environment, and it is quite environment. Tracy, do you happen to have a couple of extra tickets I could buy from you? Uh, you know, there's not a ticket to be found. 16,000 students camping out since 11.30 last night in nine-degree temperatures. This is really what championship atmosphere are all about. This is fantastic. What a great day for Wyoming basketball and for the Badgers of Wisconsin, for that matter. Take a look at both teams and what they've done historically in the WNIT. Wisconsin, one of the top teams ever to play in the WNIT. They have won this thing before. No team has repeated as champions in the WNIT, and they are making that bid today. Meanwhile, for Wyoming, four trips to the tournament. First time in the championship game. Wisconsin, 13 and one all time in the postseason WNIT. They're only lost on the road. They're 13 and 0 at home. They're 0 and 1 when they had to go on the road in the WNIT. Yeah, and they have been at home this entire 2007 WNIT. They have won all of those games. This is the first time Wisconsin's had to go on the road, and what a task this is to play in Laramie before 16,000 fans. Now, Wyoming, on the other side, has been smooth sailing at home here in Laramie. They've won all their games, and they've definitely got the altitude, the fan support, and certainly they're coming off a very high emotional triple overtime win against Kansas State. Triple overtime three nights ago with the Wildcats of Kansas State. Coach Ligurski mildly concerned about what that might have taken out of his team emotionally and physically, but they're ready to play today, and this crowd will back them all day long. Danielle Ward and Ustena Pojemska, the tip is tapped. We're underway in the championship game of the WNIT. Well, the first thing you notice is Wisconsin's got the size advantage. They, coming from the Big Ten, have those big forwards. They're going to try and use them to crash the boards, but they set a lot of their plays for Jolene Anderson. Couldn't get it to her there. Ball thrown away down toward the lane, trying to work inside the Badgers, but they lose it. Turnover on possession one. Cowgirls in the white uniforms with 15,000 plus, maybe 16,000 strong behind them every moment all day long. 
Wyoming loves to spread the floor. They run that motion offense very disciplined in their screens. They'll use the entire 30-second shot clock. Hannah Zavek to the basket. And to get used to it, Hannah Zavek, the team's leading scorer and assist maker, has the first two of the game. What I like about her coming off the 28-point performance against Kansas State, she can dribble drive or she can hit it from the outside. She's a threat from any area on the floor. Working around the perimeter, the Badgers of Wisconsin. Mariah Dunham had it down to the corner, and Wisconsin looks for their, their first basket. No good. Rebound to the Cowgirls, Jody Bullerjack. Great man-to-man -man defense by Wyoming. This is going to be a game of tempo early on, Thad. Both coaches said it's important that they establish ball possession, ball control in the early going. Of course, Wyoming, uh, Wisconsin wants to push tempo. Wyoming will be very disciplined in their offensive sex. Cowgirls running the clock down to five. Zavek for three. And an offensive board nearly pulled, but taken away. Disson couldn't hang on to it. Badgers. And that is Zavek from Melbourne, Australia. She ties it up. Possession arrow goes to Wisconsin. Badgers taking it hard to the glass. Could not convert. Cowgirls leading by two and taking another crack at it. Here's the full court press. Lisa Stone said she is going to put some pressure on the guards and forwards for Wyoming to see how they handle it. Using the athleticism of this Badger squad, of course, they've had some tough battles in this WNIT, playing the likes of Virginia, Western Kentucky, and Kentucky, and they've had to use that athleticism to run them off. Jumping the passing lane, trailing to get there. Instead, it's Jody Bowlerjack. This crowd likes anything that's positive for Wyoming, and so far, a couple of field goals, 4-0. Love her percentage from downtown. She is just dead on and opens up, makes that defense really work. Bowlerjack is the hot hand from the outside. To this point, three possessions, two turnovers for the Badgers. Finally, they will convert Danielle Ward, the 6'4 junior forward from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Gets her team on the board. That's a huge settling basket just to get the zero off the board and get the crowd at least finally doing something other than cheering. And then you do that. Instead of Pojemska, who hit the three at the end of the game, the end of regulation three nights ago to send it to overtime, hits a three, and the Cowgirls answer the Badgers' basket. Mountain West Conference newcomer of the year is Pojemska, and that is it. She's got the emotion behind her. Wisconsin coming right back with the off-balance shot from Jolene Anderson. It may not be pretty for Anderson, but she's a Big Ten scoring leader for a reason. She finds the basket. From Port Wing, Wisconsin, Jolene Anderson, first team all Big Ten this year. Won that scoring battle in the Big Ten by one point over Jessica Davenport from Ohio State in the last day of the season. Great scoring battle between two great players. Of course, they're not that worried about that, but a nice honor for Jolene Anderson. Taken away by the Badgers, trailing by three. Her first chance to make a dent in the Cowgirls. This could tie it, and it does. Mariah Dunham on the three, seven to seven is the score. We we're going to see how both teams came out shooting in the early going. It was going to tell the tale of this game. Both teams are hot and dead on. Wisconsin being able to open it up from the outside, in addition to using their foot speed. Wyoming, they are on fire from long distance, really working their screens well. Wyoming three of four from the floor so far. The Badgers three of six from the floor. Again, the shot clock winding down. Out of bounds, lost by Pojenska. Turnover to Wisconsin. We'll have a substitution or a two, but first we'll take a break. It's the championship game of the Women's National Invitation Tournament. Badgers and Cowgirls tied at seven. Fifteen minutes and 57 seconds left in the first half of play. Wisconsin and Wyoming tied at seven points apiece. Wyoming jumped on top, but Wisconsin fights back, Tracy, as we look at the Badgers bench finishing up this first time out. They've got to be happy with their response to that 7-2 deficit they were in early on. Yeah, really responding to the crowd, but it's what a championship this team is made of, and Wisconsin's been to the WNIT championship previously. All three times they've been to the postseason WNIT, they have made the championship game. We talked a little earlier, though, about the fact that they've been Successful at home. They've only been on the road once in their now three trips to the WNIT. This is uncharted territory for the Badgers, but they're holding up well against a raucous road environment. Really, the first time with the WNIT. 
Nancy, under head coach Lisa Stone came over from Drake. She's a fiery coach, and she really thrives off the guard play. So this year, Wisconsin finally has a true point guard in Ray Dalia. And so the Andersons and the Banks of the World can play the wing and use the forwards to pound the paint inside. Fresh checking, Caitlin Gibson missed the shot for the Badgers, and Wyoming comes back with the basketball. Tia Gant also in for the Badgers, wearing number 13. A couple of check-ins during the timeout. You won't see a lot of traffic at the substitution table today. Both of these teams don't go super deep. Zavik had her shot blocked out of bounds. It will be foul girls basketball. Caitlin Gibson sends it away. That is taking your plane to the paint, and that's exactly what Caitlin Gibson did. Six foot four inch Wisconsin center just swats this away as she parks herself in the paint and then just a block off Zavik and the crowd didn't like it but Wisconsin sure did point guard Raylin Delia was banged up on that last play shot up by the Cowgirls no good that would be a big situation for the Badgers Raylin Delia only a freshman but scrappy no fear is how she was described by her teammates and that would take a dent out of the offense for Wisconsin but they lose the freshman point guard let's see if she can get back in the ball game well, and on the offensive end, Gibson comes in, knocks shows out. She's got some range for the forward. Tia Gant comes in for Wisconsin. She's been emerging the past couple weeks, another freshman. So there is some great depth at the guard position for the Badgers. Sophomore Caitlin Gibson hit the basket that gave the Badgers the lead. She checked in about a minute ago. She's taken two shots and blocked the shot. Dominic in downtown. And the Cowgirls are back on top. This is a team in Wyoming that was second in the Mountain West Conference in scoring, and now you're getting a, just a look at the reason why. They don't miss very often, and they don't miss very often on their home floor. Well, the threes are starting to fly now. That's Jolene Anderson. She scores 20 a game. She can do it all. She'll drive, but she'll step back and do what she just did. Again, 27 points in the win over Western Kentucky in the semifinals. Anderson kind of putting this team on her back in the postseason play. Here's you stand up with Jenska, no good off the back iron. And the bouncing rebound down to Janice Banks. Here come the Badgers, they're gonna push it. Oh, shot, traveling violation, and the crowd will take credit for that one, as they always do. Any travel is crowd earned. You're welcome to take responsibility. Checking onto the court, Megan McGuffey and Aubrey Vandiver for Wyoming. You're really seeing how these officials are going to call the game. Are they going to call a lot of contact, or are they going to let these two teams play as we see the press for Wisconsin yet again? And they're letting the teams play, which means we're going to probably see a more physical play as this game goes on. 45, Brittany Hines also into the Badgers. Reverse, no good. But Zavek there to get her own miss. And Wyoming will take it back around the perimeter. Bowler Jack finds the scene. Nice board by Jolene Anderson, also the team's top rebounder at seven rebounds per game. You've got to wonder at 5'8", how she does it all. A little too hasty trying to get down the court. Badgers turn it over fourth time. Four Badger turnovers compared to two for the Cowgirls. Early trending, by the way, 6-3 to three rebounding for Wisconsin. They have out-rebounded 31 of 35 opponents this season. Love the way Wyoming forwards handle the basketball. They break the press for Wisconsin, get down the floor fairly quickly, and then Gibson picks up the foul as Zavik tries to go baseline. But Wyoming makes things happen, and they do it really unselfish play. First foul of the game. And it's Jody Bowlerjack from Columbia, Missouri, and Hickman High School, the junior, with the basket. And we've got one brewing here, just under 13 minutes to go. The host Wyoming Cowgirls 12 and the Wisconsin Badgers 12 in the WNIT championship game. Vandiver with the rebound. Bowler Jack's hot. She'll get it to Zavek just inside the arc. Don't know how you can leave Zavek all alone like that. She had all day to knock down that shot. Wisconsin, you're wondering, just a step behind Wyoming. And we had a block, but we also had a foul. Zavek had six blocks in the semifinal game on Wednesday night. All of the team's six blocks. Looks like she had one there. We've got a foul call coming up underneath. Anderson trying to go baseline. And it looks like it's just tipped out of bounds. 
but Wisconsin will keep the basketball. And we'll check it here. Officials are at the table. They might have been checking on clock. Quick adjustment, and it was a shot clock check, so don't charge a foul. Just make sure the clocks are right. Here we go with the Badgers, and now a foul as the ball worked down on the low right blocks. Good job by the Badgers of continuing with that plan to take Wyoming inside. It is the recipe. What a season for Wisconsin. Last year they went 11 and 18. This year they're at 23 and 12 under Lisa Stone. They've got that great chemistry. They've got a little bit of depth at guard play. And they're a team that really is destined. They've got all eyes on that NCAA tournament next year. Dominique Sisk picks up the foul, the point guard for the Cowgirls. Second free throw, no good for Brittany Hines. She had a sub waiting for her at the bench, so maybe she wanted to stay in the game, just missed the second one and run some more. Over 7,000 feet of elevation. We'll see how that works for the Badgers. Three in and out for Bolajak. Offensive rebound for the guard. It's Megan McGuffey, a resident of Cheyenne, Wyoming, a local favorite. That play started and finished with Megan McGuffey. She got the entry pass, and then she continued her momentum toward the basket, got positioning under the basket for the rebound at just 5'11". Good interior passing for the Badgers, but the Cowgirls defense it nicely, and Sisk has it the other way in the left corner. Rebounds evening up, Wyoming 8-7 on the boards right now. That's not something Wisconsin's used to. They, as I said earlier, 31 out of 35 times this year have out-rebounded the opponent. So Wyoming standing in there on the glass. Wow. Shot clock optional in many cases yeah. here as Wisconsin wants to fire up some points. Pojemsko on one side, Anderson on the other, just trading shots. The rest of the team just kind of hanging out. And there you see the height of Wisconsin underneath the basket. You had three Wyoming players surrounded Wisconsin, and Wisconsin's going to go to the line, but Brittany Hines, the freshman, ferocious. Back after this from the WNIT championship game in Laramie, Wyoming. Welcome back to the WNIT championship game from Laramie, Wyoming. Cowgirls up by one at 11.20, remaining in the first half of action. Thad Anderson and Tracy Warren with you, enjoying the action to this point. WNIT, a large production, 48 teams, started the bracket down to two. Thanks to Southwest Host Services, a proud partner of the WNIT. Nationwide team travel since 1991, southwesthost.com. You see their web address on your screen, Southwest Host. Com, a key cog in getting all the teams and support folks traveled from spot to spot during the course of the WNIT. It's quite a logistics production thanks to Southwest Host Services. Well, Tracy Warren, you made the trip from California, and so far here in Wyoming, a pretty good show being put on. Wow, great crowd, great atmosphere, outstanding shooting from both of these teams. Wisconsin getting it done from outside, two for three from three-point land. And showing they've got a little bench depth with now Brittany Hines on the free throw line. You mentioned the height of Wisconsin starting to be utilized. Brittany Hines was way too far underneath the basket on that last opportunity, but because of the height, she went with it, got the offensive rebound, then got the foul. Loose ball tracked down by Wisconsin off the missed free throw. Nice move into the paint, a little too strong off the glass for Tia Gant, and the Cowgirls come away. Love how Megan McGuffey playing this game. If, if Wyoming's going to win this game, they've got to be able to work the glass. Wisconsin only out-rebounded by four teams this season, so they really use their guards and forwards well. Three-point try off the mark for Hannah Zavek, the junior forward for the Cowgirls. And Wisconsin starting to feel a little bit more at home here on the road. 14-14, but they've stabilized the game, starting to play their game. Just about halfway through the first half of action. Great help defense by Wyoming. No penetration at the top of the key for Wisconsin. Foul coming against the Cowgirls. Over to the sidelines with Jamie Carey. Yeah, Wisconsin just reported that their point guard, Ray Landalia, is out with a right hand injury. Out for the game. She'll be heading for x rays. And that is a big loss for Wisconsin. That's your Big Ten assist leader who has basically, even though she's a freshman, has led this team at the point all season long. T again has come in and emerged the past couple weeks, but a big, big loss for the Badgers here in the WNIT championship. And that came early on a defensive set. D'Elia goes out of the game, and the report is that she is done. That is very unfortunate, not just for the 
potency of the Wisconsin basketball team, but just for the experience of a young player. And remember, she's a freshman from Waterford, Wisconsin. A great environment to be in as a young player to start developing through your career and have this in your portfolio. Wyoming well, takes away the rebound, and the Cowgirls will bring it back to their side of the basketball court. Work it inside to Megan McGuffey. Spins tries to score, but Mariah Dunham won't have it. The freshman Mariah Dunham with the defensive stop. That is a great matchup there. Anderson guarded by Zavik. Rattling violation. And the Cowgirls get it back. Both teams stuck on 14 here momentarily anyway. Taking a breather perhaps from that early offensive flurry. And the Cowgirls have a chance to get back up on top. It's definitely a, a game of momentum, and both teams came out matching, trading baskets, and now a little physical underneath the basket for both of these teams, and the officials are starting to call it. There's a traveling violation, and the Cowgirls turn it over. It will go back to Wisconsin. Neither team has hit a field goal since the 12.30 mark, so we're at about three minutes off the clock since anybody's hit a two-point goal. You know, you talked to Joe Ligurski, and he said, I'm a little concerned. We had that triple overtime against Kansas State. I'm worried physically and emotionally. Gave the team the day off the next day, and then he had a light practice on Friday. Shot around a little bit early today, and he really wanted fresh legs for this team, so they were ready for the test of a WNIT championship. Now yeah, we've got a lane violation, some discombobulation in both offenses right now, and you might be seeing part of that due to Wisconsin's lack of their regular point guard. Number five, Sarah Ingeson is in for Wisconsin. The freshman guard from Roseville, Minnesota, has not logged humongous minutes this year. We'll get a chance to see Sarah Ingeson and how she can handle that offense. And Ingeson was really slated to be the point guard early on. That basket and one. Wyoming has worked on their inside penetrating, and this is Bowler Jack taking baseline, drawing contact, and counted for one. And I like her aggressiveness. We've seen her hit her from the outside, and when she sees a seam, maybe a little overplay by the defender, she goes baseline. Two plus one for Jody Bowler Jack. We could hear that slap over here. It's loud in here. We can't hear much. That was a hard foul. She still got the ball in the basket. Hit her free throw. Great job by Bowler Jack. On her team three points, trying to answer the Badgers. That three's off the mark. Joey and Anderson can't track down the offensive board. Cowgirls with a three-point lead and the basketball. Wyoming started off in this contest five of six on field goal shooting since that time. Two of 11 after that torrid start. But Wyoming showing signs of life here in this last possession. Got pumped up by Jody Bullerjack. Great block from behind. Seeing some of the athleticism of Wisconsin. It's Zavik and Anderson. And then the great block from behind from Mariah Dunham, the freshman out of Wisconsin. Six foot three and using all of it to deny that. Megan McGuffey had to fix her hair after that one. She got sent away. Great block by Dunham inside. Zavik. She got the board. Lisa Stone wanted the over the back. Instead, Zavik's going to get free throws. You know, when there was a round of applause for one player on Wyoming that was head and shoulders above the rest, it was for Hannah Zavik. And she is as blue collar as you get. Works both ends of the floor, rebounds, shoots well, and good at the free throw line. Jolene Anderson picked up her first personal foul. Now three team fouls for Wisconsin. One more coming for Hannah Zavek. She's 75% from the free throw line, and she hits both of those free throws on this time down. The other night in the semifinals, Hannah Zavek was 17 of 24 from the free throw line. She got there 24 times against K-State. Big basket for the Badgers by Mariah Dunham, who has been playing a huge set of minutes here for the Badgers. She had 10 points in the win against Western Kentucky, and she showed that she's got some range. She'll also post up strong, but that'll be a way to stretch the defense. And we're getting it started now. Anna Zavek from three-point land, and the offenses are back in gear after a little hiatus. It's interesting. Wisconsin came out up-tempo, up-tempo, but now the, the tempo has shifted to Wyoming. They're able to hit their shots. They're controlling this game right now. The crowd
crowd knows what you now know. This is the largest lead of the game for the Cowgirls at five points. Is the answer there? Boom from Jolene Anderson. And that, wow. like you said, Tracy, that was not pretty. That was give me the ball and put in the basket from the corner over here. Three points on the board gets it back to a two-point game. Out of Port Wing, Wisconsin. She lived on a farm, shot a lot of shots, and her dad put a hoop on the barn and just kept shooting and shooting, rebounded her own shot. But she became this phenomenal shooter. Worked in her conditioning in the offseason. Anderson lost 25 pounds. She's really been a star for the Badgers. Out of bounds goes the basketball. Cowgirls will have possession with the two-point lead. In Laramie, Wyoming, you're watching the WNIT Championship game. It's the last day of the basketball season for both of these teams. One will win, one will lose. The WNIT Championship presented by Triple Crown Sports back in Laramie, Wyoming, and the Cowgirls up by two. It's been back and forth, Tracy, as Wisconsin early on loses their point guard, but they're holding steady here with Wyoming. Yeah, Ray D'Elia, really an extension of Lisa Stone at the point guard position. Big Ten assist leader, and she goes out with a hand injury. And Lisa Stone relied so much on D'Elia. Now who does she go to? Well, Ingeson is relied on for the offense. Gann is relied on for the defense. Oh, yeah, and she's got a couple assistant coaches that have a great history at the point guard position. Wow, Lisa Stone was a Drake. Under seven minutes now to play in the first half of activity, and Wyoming has the two-point lead. Is it five? It is. Ustena Kojemska. Great quick hit out of the timeout for Joe Ligurski. That's a great call to get his forward in position for a quick three. And again, put momentum back on the side for the Cowgirls. Mariah Dunham gets up underneath the basket. And Wyoming takes it away. Well, this crowd is fantastic. They've built quite a basketball tradition over the years with the men's program. Here's a foul as Zabek drives to the basket. This town is just hungry for good basketball, and they are getting it delivered to them by Coach Joe Ligurski's squad this year. Yeah, he is a great thinking coach. As he was breaking down film, as soon as he knew that the team was going to play Wisconsin, he said, well, give me about six game films, and then talk to me afternoon, and I'll tell you what Wisconsin does. And he has a great game plan. Part of that is Zavik putting the ball on the floor and getting her opportunities at the charity stripe. Zavik now three of three from the free throw line, eight points, make it nine as she's four of four in the early going from the stripe. She's getting there again. That's something Coach Nagurski talked about. His team gets to the free throw line a lot. They draw arm bars, they make it come out and guard them, and they find a way to get the freebies. There's a turnaround basket. And it's going to be an offensive foul. Just allow it. Danielle Ward cleared it out. No bucket. A tough series for Ward on both ends of the floor. She was the one who picked up the foul against Havik last time, and then she picks up the offensive foul. So they are really taking it to Ward on the inside. Under six minutes to go in the first half. Critical time now for Wisconsin trying to stay. It's single digits on the deficit, down by seven. Wyoming beginning to assert themselves. Good passing lane jump by Danielle Ward. It'll go out of bounds to Wyoming. And Ward comes out of the game because, as Lisa Stone senses, they're really kind of taking it to her. And get a little bit more physical in this inside. Ward very athletic. Sis kicks it out. Shot clock running down. Pajemska, nothing there. Wisconsin comes back. Anderson inside the Hines. Out of bounds. It is Wisconsin basketball. Jolene Anderson needs one point to set the WNIT scoring record for a tournament. She's at eight points right now. Looking for another. And she would be the most prolific scorer in postseason WNIT history. In a single tournament. Crucial drive. Almost got that to go off the glass. But wouldn't have mattered. Wisconsin struggling on the offensive end. If they're going to get it done, it's going to be Anderson. But struggling right now to find a rhythm on the offensive end is the Badgers. Credit the great help defense by the Wyoming Cowgirls. Eight to four in the turnover column. Wisconsin on the wrong end of that number. They've got to get some ball control. Still within seven if they begin to handle it. 
Obviously got the talent to make this championship game quite a battle. You know, Dad, what they're doing now, the officials are calling this game closer in the paint. Early on, before D'Elia got hurt, they were letting that pushing and shoving go and let the players go up and down the floor. Now they're starting to call it a little bit closer. So any little movement underneath the basket, they're calling it. Now, Wisconsin out of the Big Ten is used to a lot of physical play. First free throw on the one and one, no good for Megan McGuffey. And it comes back for Wisconsin. That's Jolene Anderson with the basketball. She has two personal fouls now with one on the defensive side and one on that last offensive call. And Jolene Anderson is left in the game, trusting the junior is Coach Stone to keep the in the ball game. Shot swatted away. Wisconsin retains it. Badgers to the glass. Count it. And one. Banks needs to get in this game offensively. Ward and Dunham. And finally, with Banks got denied, Dunham picked up the slack and went back and got the job done because everybody is looking for Anderson, so someone else needs to come up. It's the freshman out of Watertown, Wisconsin. First personal foul for Hannah Zavik. The free throw is no good. Two points that time down for the Badgers. We've got it back to a five-point game. It's the WNIT championship game. We're in Laramie, Wyoming. Cowgirls earned this game on Wednesday night with a triple overtime thriller against Kansas State. Pivoting and scoring is Jody Bollerjack. Bollerjack having a very aggressive game, coming out and just finding a shot from the outside, penetrating, working the glass, finding multiple ways to get it done, taking the pressure off. Bullerjack now with nine points. Tied for game high honors. Uh-oh, that's going to be number two on Hannah Zavek, it would appear. So now Zavek has two, and Jolene Anderson has two. And we've got free throws coming up after a timeout on the floor. Just under four minutes to go. First half of the WNIT Championship game. Cowgirls up by seven. The support comes from all angles here at the University of Wyoming. Jamie Carey up in the crowd with a couple of Cowgirl fans. I'm here with Brandon Ewing from the men's basketball team. Brandon, you just got a new coach. Coach Moore, how do you uh, like it so far? Oh, Coach, he's a great coach. Uh, he's doing the next day. Uh, he's working on some offenses for us, so we can't wait to play for him. What have you guys been doing the last week or so? Oh, lifting weights. He's, uh, he's training us to get ready to uh, win championships and have a crowd like this, just like the girls got it. Yeah. How do you feel about this atmosphere, Brandon? Oh, this is crazy, man. I just can't wait for next year. <laughs> All right, back to you, Thad. Thank you, Jamie Carey. Jamie played in a Final Four for the Texas Longhorns, current WNBA player. And out here, like all of us, enjoying this scene, along with Brandon Ewing and the members of the men's basketball team. And it's true. The program has decided that they want the men to come and see this to see what the men's program can get back to. They've been this at a lot of times in their history. Free throw shooting troubles for Wisconsin. They are 29% from the line right now, two of seven. In fact, those were two big misses from a player who shoots 85% from the charity stripe and your leading scorer. You wonder if Wisconsin has their legs in them early on. She knows two more. Two-point basket for Jody Bolojack. Into double digits she goes. Jody Bolojack, five of eight from the floor. One of one from the free throw line. 11 points. Bolojack has been the early star of the game. And she looks a little bit like Cheryl Crow, too. There's great a great move. inside move. Nice basket by Janice Banks. Wanted to see some offense from Janice Banks, the junior guard out of Indianapolis, because all the weight has been falling on Anderson, and Dunham's been picking up her part. With Delia out, somebody else needs to step up. Great bucket and assertiveness by Banks underneath. Dominique Sisk handling the basketball. Coach Ligurski mentioned that he loves his point guard, does a great job handling pressure, but he does not put the same amount of pressure on his point guard as many programs do. He likes her to get it up to the front court and then get into the motion offense with everybody else. Basket missed by Zavek, and Wisconsin has the bouncing rebound. Seven-point basketball game. Badgers need a bucket. When you need one, go to Jolene Anderson. Can't get the bounce. It's still a seven-point game, 31 to 24. And we come back with the Cowgirls. Yeah. 
Whistle comes as Zabek drives the left side. All the fans yelling for Zabek to take Gibson to the hole because they're saying Gibson can't ma match you toe to toe. She just doesn't have the athleticism. They were waiting for Zabek to take that stutter step. She did, and she'll get her opportunities again at the line. Second personal foul for Mariah Dunham, the 6'1 freshman forward for the Badgers from Watertown High School in Wisconsin. Checking in for the Badgers is Sarah Ingerson, another freshman. She is replacing Jolene Anderson. Zavik, second free throw good. She is five of six from the free throw line now. And checking back in, Aubrey Vandenberg. Her dad was an assistant coach here at Wyoming for the last handful of years. Aubrey from Laramie High School right here locally. She's another crowd favorite. She's in the ball game. Her team has an eight-point lead in Wisconsin has it. Says her father had a great influence on her intellectual part of understanding the game of basketball. Badgers continue to try to drive the lane, which is a good idea. They'll get the offensive glass. Another offensive board, and finally the putback is there for Mariah Dun Dunham playing a great first half of basketball. Yeah, she really is going toe to toe with Anderson and putting points on the board and not letting this game get too far away. The glass, controlling the glass, it's been the Badgers' forte all season long, doing it again today. Van Der Verk. Vandiver does it as soon as she comes in the game. 30-second timeout is called by Wyoming. 30 seconds. Use it or lose it in the first half. And the Cowgirls enjoying the eight-point margin after the Vandiver basket with 125 left in the first half of play. The WNIT relies on Vista Travel for all of their airline needs. When you need a professional, call Vista Travel, celebrating 36 years of providing customers with the best travel services available. Travelwithvista.com. It's travelwithvista.com. Not only does the WNIT rely on Vista Travel, but Tracy Warren relies on Vista Travel. We were having a hard time finding an airplane to get you here on Thursday. And finally, Vista Travel came through and got us a flight. An amazing time of year. It was spring break. But honestly, this community, this is what's going on. This game is what's going on. And there's a lot of hotel trouble getting in here. This is big. Joe Ligurski even said he's getting emails from people as far as three hours away saying, I'm coming to your WNIT championship. Thank you for pulling together the state of Wyoming with your women's basketball team. Great job. Good attack by the Badgers and Caitlin Gibson, but the shot goes awry, and Aubrey Vandiver has the basket. The basketball up top. No basket yet, but you might expect one soon. One on each Jody Bowler Jack on top. Under a minute to go, and there she is again. Vandiver puts it in, and she'll shoot. What is the freshman Aubrey, Aubrey Vandiver doing well? She's using her body against Tia again. She's got about an inch, but she uses her body to gain positioning underneath, and then with a small hook shot using a little bit of glass. Great, great contact, basket, and a foul. Substitution for the Badgers before the single free throw. It's Danielle Ward, the junior, checking back in, replacing Caitlin Gibson. Six minutes ago, the score was 22 to 20. Cowgirls were up by a pair in the last six minutes. They've gone now on a 15 to 6 run, and they lead this game by 11 points. Largest lead of the championship game of the WNIT. Less than a minute to go, first half. Wisconsin 20 and 0 when they have led at half. It does not appear they will have that number today. Turnover by the Badgers. Traveling violation was the call. The crowd eats it up. Cowboy Joe, you saw a shot of the mascot just a second ago. He's loving it. And we're down to 40 seconds to go first half. Wyoming cannot expire the clock. The shot clock will get to him first, but they are going to be happy in the locker room here in about 32 seconds. Using all of this clock would be to Wyoming's advantage. They've done it the entire first half. Great pass by Vandiver. Oh. Pass before the Cowgirls by Elizabeth Disson. Vandiver, great bounce pass through the lane. Shot. One last chance for the Cowgirls. Two seconds to go. 
Vandiver. No oh, good. This place is happy. 39 to 26. The Badgers have some work to do in their locker room, but don't count this one over yet. It's a 13-point ball game at the half. Cowgirls 39 to 26. Head coach Joe Ligurski. Good masterminding in the first 20 minutes of action. We'll be back with a mini clinic segment. Young players, stay tuned as Jamie Carey shows you some of the finer points of the fundamentals. It's the WNIT championship game. Halftime, Wyoming on top. WNIT championship game. 20 minutes remaining. The Badgers have the ball and need a basket to get something started to carve into the 13-point disadvantage as we kick off the second half from Laramie. Wisconsin's got to try and set Anderson up a little bit more on the offensive end, get her some double screens, and it always helps when you get some scoring from your fourth guard, Tia Gant. Tia Gant goes right to business, gets the basket. Great attack by the Badgers on their first possession. Yeah, I like that out of the halftime, and you, it really sets a message that the point guard is Gant now, that Delia is out, and she's going to take the ball to the hoop. Gets the crowd off your back a little bit, too, and that's been... A key for the Cowgirls all tournament long, really, as they've hosted every round in the WNIT. They're enjoying a capacity group today. Wow. Really calling a lot of close play underneath. Just some hand checks are being called. And again, that is typical in Big Ten play. So the likes of Ward, who are trying to just draw contact and fend off the offensive player, they're getting called for it now. Second personal foul for Danielle Ward. Three points for Ustena Ojemska. She shoots 37% from behind the arc. And Pajemska today, 3 of 5 on three-point tries. Yeah, a member of the Polish national team and has that international flavor that can really hit it from the outside. Good defense by Pajemska that time on Mariah Dunham. Really like both ends of the court play by Wyoming. Pajemska hits the shot. She turns around, boxes out, gets the board, and resets the offense for Wyoming. The party will begin if this goes in. Dominique Sis can't get a big board by Elizabeth Disson. Cowgirls continue to hit the glass. And a big underdog in the rebounding projections for this game. They have not fallen to that. Disson inside on the assist by Pajemska. And one. This is just great play. Great dish to Disson inside who finds a way to really find room underneath the basket. And it's just a little too much for Wisconsin to handle right now. Lisa Stone says, let's put a stop to this. One free throw coming up after a break. Wyoming, big lead. The lead has ballooned to 16 points in the early going of the second half of the WNIT championship game. Cowgirls of Wyoming enjoying a timeout called by Wisconsin. Badgers trying to slow it down. You saw Coach Joe Ligurski with his team there, Tracy. You talked about how good he is at adjustments, analysis of the game, and they have done everything right so far today. Yeah, they really have. They've mixed up the outside shooting. They see mismatches. They dribble drive and penetrate. But let's talk about their help defense. Only 28 points for Wisconsin so far. They have great team court awareness, and that is one of the special things of this Mountain West Conference team. One free throw for Elizabeth Disson on the two plus one. No good. Third foul picked up by Danielle Ward on that last whistle. Danielle Ward with three for the Badgers. Out of bounds. That goes. Turnover. And it's Cowgirl basketball. There you see the noise being a factor as this crowd continues to get into this game. It is very difficult to have verbal commands if you're the point guard and have your team pick it up. Wisconsin, a couple of missed twos just because the crowd here in Laramie is so loud. Tough time scoring today for the Badgers at 28 points here in the early going of the second half. Try no good for Pajemska. Badgers run. Jolene Anderson. Offensive rebound. Nice work on the glass by Mariah Dunham, who's had a strong game, and the Badgers will take it out of bounds. Anderson maybe not taking the best shots. Not letting the team get in the offense, but she's trying to get her team back into this game, and she's done it all season long. And she will take a lot of shots. That's just how Wisconsin 
rolls the dice with Anderson taking several shots in this game. Dominique Sisk picked up her second personal foul moments ago. She's got the ball now for her offense. Bowler Jack, one of the keys in the first half for Wyoming. Wyoming really wears you down if you're a defender. They'll use all of that shot clock, a lot of cuts, a lot of screens off a motion-type offense. Then with about six seconds to go when you think you can let up on defense, yes. they got to score. Great block work by Ustena Pojemska, the 6'2 junior from Roswas, Poland. Played at Casper College here in the state of Wyoming for a couple of years and then transferred over, as Tracy mentioned, the Mountain West Conference Newcomer of the Year this year. No good on the long try. Put back by Jolene Anderson. Good bucket for Anderson. Anderson. Just need a couple of those baskets. Really what Wisconsin needs now is a defensive stop. They've got to play all 30 seconds of the shot clock. Bowler Jack. Short on the three. Wisconsin has a chance to cut it down below 16. Anderson unfazed by the little stutter in the ball coming up court. Anderson drills it. Now look at Anderson sending that message home. Hey, two, two. And also that's a play for Wisconsin. So she plays without emotion. And she says, rarely will you see it in her face. Game good, game bad. Anderson the same way. Jolene Anderson now the all-time leading scorer in postseason WNIT scoring for one tournament. She set the new mark here today. Great player Jolene Anderson trying to keep her team right on it. We've got a foul call against Wisconsin. You could see that play develop for Wyoming and Jody Bowler Jack really having a lot of awareness for the shot clock. With about six seconds to go, she started to make the drive and drew contact from two Wisconsin defenders. But when she didn't have the open shot, she knew she needed to manufacture some points, and she's going to get it done at the free throw line. Brittany Hines drew that last foul. Checking out is Mariah Dunham and Caitlin Gibson down the low blocks for the Badgers. Free throw good for Jody Bowler Jack out of Hickman High School in Columbia, Missouri. The junior, one of the team's top defenders, Jody Bowler Jack played 55 minutes every minute of a triple overtime game three nights ago, having a great game today. Whistle and a stop on that as Wyoming tried to put it away. Foul called against Wisconsin. A timeout on the floor. Jolene Anderson recently did a little something for her team from the three-point line. They're going to need more. 15-point lead for the Cowgirls. They call it the Dome of Doom, and somewhere out in the Dome is Jamie Carey. would be a, a, an easy word because this place is packed and and I played ball here I, I lettered in football and basketball and right up there behind you it says men's basketball NCAA and we went to the quarterfinals in 1952 this is where my blood and bone are in this game I love it just love it absolutely now I understand you live about 360 miles away from here in Cody Wyoming tell me about Team. This game uh, for, for Wyoming, we live up near in Cody, near Yellowstone Park, my wife and Ann and I and our children. <laughs> what was your question? Just how this state is embraced. Well, this state loves cowboy athletics because there are only four states, two states that have only one four-year institution, Vermont and Wyoming. So they put all their energy behind the Wyoming Cowboys and the Wyoming Cowgirls. They have a good coach, football, Joe Glenn, who took Montana to two national titles. They have a new basketball coach. This man was coach of the year. And these Cowgirls are, look like they're going to win the national NIT. And boy, that has people all juiced up. <laughs> As you can see, this is a senator. Very excited about this Cowgirl team. Back to you, Thad. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Jamie. Cody, Wyoming. Rodeo every night in Cody. Well, a minute ago, you saw Jody Bolojak hit a three. Now you see Hannah Zavek drive and score. It's a 20-point margin, and the Badgers clawing for a last hope, but it's starting to look like a brown and gold day. Wyoming. Moves ball down to Pajemska. 
Wyoming continues to control this tempo. Very active on offense. Very good feel for what the defenders are doing. Zavek reading the defense, finding the thread, gets the needle, and then working the defensive end. The entire crowd behind this team, and, and you know, you can't miss it. You've got senators in the crowd, it's in the paper, it's on the television, it's on the radio. Everybody has cowgirl fever, because this is unprecedented. Joe Ligurski has brought a new, really, emotion to Laramie, Wyoming for women's basketball, and that is that of a champion. Jolene Anderson continuing for her Wisconsin team to try to score. You've seen her take a couple of tough shots. Assist no good. Zavak hits the boards. Back to assist. Still in the basket. And the Cowgirls are attacking the paint. Time out, Wisconsin. Coach Lisa Stone wants to stop this. 30 seconds on the stop. And this place is going berserk. With the lead, Wyoming never stops working. They're crashing the board. Zavek then finds her teammate. Great dish to Dominique Sist from the outside. Zavek with the dish, and then she follows it up to Zist, who kept going after the missed shot. And they tell you, you always should follow your shot because you get unselfish teammates like Hanna Zavek, who leads the team in assists. And this is part of the reason why. Zavek, 12 points, four rebounds, three assists. Not shooting particularly well for herself today, but doing everything you need to do to win a championship. She's been referred to as the team's security blanket. A calming influence out there. Just instills confidence in her teammates, and you're seeing it through other things besides scoring. And she's still got 12. That's nothing to shy off about. But Zavek is getting it done. Disson takes the ball away. Zavek hustles. It'll go back to the Badgers. Wisconsin needs a bucket. Dunham back in this game. Lisa Stone went to her bench and said, Dunham, got to get some offense for our team. Anderson hits the wow. tough shot, three-point basket. That was a fadeaway three-point basket. You talk about tough shots. Jolene Anderson, first team all Big Ten. She finds a way to score. Already told you she's, she has set a new single tournament record for combined points in a tournament. Here's a takeaway by Janice Banks. And she gets the basket, so Wisconsin a little breath of the light. Yeah, and you see Lisa Stone saying, come on, let's press them now. That's back-to-back -back baskets. Let's get this momentum shift now with 12 minutes to go, just over 12 minutes, and let's get it back in the Badger territory. It's a 17-point game. You get that down to 12 or 13, you feel like you're building something. Talked about Jolene Anderson. Ride her as long as she'll just keep shooting for you. She's got 29 consecutive double-figure scoring games now. She has license to shoot whenever she wants to, and it's what they're going to need. Zavek takes it inside, loses the ball, and the Badgers, it's not like this is dramatic yet, but this is clearly a little shift for the Badgers. Zavek got her hand on the shot, also took a shot to the chin. You see her there making sure the parts are all still in place. She got beat up in the game against Kansas State, the triple overtime. She was on the floor, she was making shots, playing both ends of the floor. That just a frustration swat and got the worst of it. Nice work by Janice Banks fighting inside. She kept at it down low until she was able to get that foul. 5'10 junior guard from Indianapolis, Indiana, Ben Davis High School, Janice Banks. <laughs> Third personal foul for Hannah Zavek. Three fouls, and that is a small situation developing for Coach Ligurski. Yeah, and this is your best free throw shooter. Second on the team, but clutch of late for Janice Banks. So why not keep shooting? Why not keep trying to get those opportunities at the line? Against Western Kentucky, eight for eight from the charity stripe. And now with Zavek coming out with three fouls, this is Wisconsin's opportunity to make those momentum runs like they did against Kentucky when they were down, like they did against Virginia when they were down in this WNIT tournament. Audrey Vandiver checked in moments ago, and that was Megan McGuffey who just came on the floor. Nice job by Janice Banks. Again, the slow, steady approach is what they're going to have to take, and you can kind of see that in, in their eyes. Wisconsin understands the work ahead of them. Don't need to rush this. Just start playing consistently tough basketball. And you see they're starting to take some risks. A little aggressive on the defensive end, trying to go for the steals. Anderson just tried to go for the steal. 
Pajemska drives the baseline out of bounds it goes it will stay with Wyoming and there's a timeout good swing for the Badgers here in the last couple of minutes of play they've got it back to a 15 point game in the WNIT championship from Laramie Wyoming Wyoming and Wisconsin Mountain West Conference hosting the Big Ten today and Wyoming up by 15 lead was 18 moments ago and Wisconsin has responded they are playing against some elements today you see that title up there for the record and what that means is this is four straight games now that Wyoming the Cowgirls have reset their all-time attendance record four straight rounds of the WNIT building on March 22nd and growing on through to today 15,462 strong that probably I think we'll do a check on that but that should register as the second biggest crowd ever in Wyoming basketball history men or women well you're really seeing how these teams are coming out of the timeouts because they know how key it is to set the momentum and tempo out of the timeouts Wisconsin trying to push the basketball as they have been trying to do all game long great transition defense by Wyoming to get back and now they'll get the opportunity on the offensive end Trying to bounce it inside the Vandiver, and that is taken away. The Badgers' Tia Gant has the basketball. Really feels like Wisconsin has picked it up a notch on the defensive end. They're beating passes to the players through the steals. Very active. Whistle and a foul inside. And you can tell by everybody sitting and moaning. That's a Wyoming foul. Yes, that if I'm Wisconsin and I know that Wyoming's not deep on their bench, I might keep going for those dribble drives to draw the foul. I mean, you got Zavek out with three fouls. Why not keep going with that same philosophy? In and out for Jolene Anderson. Out of bounds it goes, and Wisconsin will have the basketball. Megan McGuffey just picked up her second personal foul moments ago. And Wisconsin, even these kinds of things, Tracy, weren't happening before. Now Wisconsin getting multiple looks on a trip down the floor. You could just feel the change in how the Badgers have been able to assert their offense. Great pass. Tough shot and a tie up on the rebound. Possession arrow favors the Badgers, so Wisconsin keeps the ball. Good battle by Danielle Ward. Got a nice pass, but not quite in the spot to shoot. And a good collapse by Wyoming. She's got the six foot four inch height. One of the tallest players out there. Just the muscle in there, the banging around. She's really taking her knocks. Outside, Janice Banks has the ball. Anderson. Oh, it. Wow. And one. We've got a three plus one opportunity in front of Jolene Anderson. And if there wasn't a momentum shift before, there is now. You're talking about acrobatic shots. Anderson off the screen. They were trying to set her up. Deliberately waited, waited, waited to deliver her the basketball. Very quick with the shot. And Bowler Jack picks up the foul. Jody Bowler Jack's first personal four-point play for Jolene Anderson. And re-entering Hannah Zavek and Dominique Sisk. Coach Ligurski sends back in the enforcements. They weren't reinforcements. He's going back to the original power. They're joined in there, by the way, in the low left block is Rebecca Vanderjack. Seeing some time. She's been in for a couple of minutes now for the Cowgirls. And you really see if Wisconsin, they got it done by starting it on the defensive end, getting the steals, getting the rebound. See if they can continue that. And there she is. Good shot for Rebecca Vanderjack. Not afraid to take it when it was presented to her. She hits it. Jolene Anderson. Again driving and finishing with the bucket is Tia Gant. Gant has been attacking the middle of the lane. Yeah, great five foot ten inches. She's got big size for her guard, at least in today's game, and using it. First quick step, great opportunity. It's a 12 to 3 Wisconsin run since the 13.53 mark, so well, that, well handled here in the last few moments. Yeah, you assess this game and you say, okay, Wisconsin had to travel in a matter of a day to come to Laramie. They had to come to 7,220 feet altitude to come to a crowd about 15,400, but they're starting to make a comeback and a real credit. Lisa Stone has always been a fighter as a coach. She really implements that 
fiery attitude in her team, and they're, they're starting to go at it again. Badgers' Mariah Dunham checked out with three personal fouls. Dunham has been a big player for the Badgers today. She is out right now with those three. And another foul called against the Badgers. That's Jolene Anderson, and she's got three fouls. This is where you need Pajemska to kind of start to open it up or, or Zavik from the outside. Jolene Anderson with 20 points to lead all scorers in the game. She's got three fouls, but again, you're going to keep firing that gun until it's empty. It's the last game of the year, win or lose. And Anderson has showed well in the championship game with the WNIT. Sisk drives. Pajemska missed it. Ball knocked around. Joey Anderson picks it up. That's an 11 point game. Cut it to single digits right here. Whistle before any shooting took place. The foul against the Cowgirls. And to the floor goes Joey Anderson. She's up. Checking in for the Badgers. Sarah Ingeson wearing number five. She's replacing Tia Gant. And now Hannah Zavek draws that foul. She has four. Wow. And you got to know that Wisconsin's keeping track of Hanna Zavik's fouls because she is so instrumental on the offensive and defensive end of the floor. Underneath and nearly got it to go. Denise Banks instead the rebound off. Sisk runs it up the floor for the Cowgirls. Holding on to that 11 point lead. Actually they grown to 22 points at one time. 55-33 was the count. Look at the great back screens that are happening far into the paint. Great patience and discipline by, Wy by Wyoming. Sisk follows her shot. Can't get that. A couple of good looks for Sisk. Good hustle. Didn't get the roll, and Jolene Anderson has it in the backcourt. Jolene Anderson, phenomenal performance. We already mentioned it, but she has now surpassed Jenny Linger from Southwest Missouri State in 2005. Now called Missouri State. Linger had 116 points in the tournament a couple of years ago, and Anderson has scored 128 now in the course of her games here in the 07 postseason NIT. Scoreboard stuck for the last couple of moments. Zavek won't get that to the rim, and it's out of bounds. Well, both of these teams now are penetrating and drawing the fouls, but the fouls just weren't called on that end of the floor. Wisconsin went deep. And then now Wyoming went deep, no foul called. Anderson's got to get a spell because she has just been working both ends of the floor. So now you see what can Wyoming do with their lead while Anderson is out of the game. Jolene Anderson goes out with Danielle Ward, replaced by Tia Gant and Caitlin Gibson. Megan McGuffey checked in for the Cowgirls. She's working the left side of the blocks. Pajemska has a look at a three. Cowgirls are not shooting it well here in this stretch, and Wisconsin again taking a crack at getting into single digits on the deficit. Yeah, Dunham out, Anderson out. One of these Badgers need to step up. And Good it, finish. Yeah, absolutely. Janice Banks, we're waiting for her to erupt. Averages better than 14 points per game, at, but it's been fairly quiet in this WNIT championship. Banks now with eight points, three of 12 shooting, has had a hard time finding the range, but. As Tracy just said, do not forget about Banks. She's right there with Jolene Anderson as a talented scorer. Nice pass. Nice. 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 basket for the Cowgirls. Was a newcomer of the year last year in the Mountain West Conference. You see, she really attacks the basket. Great yeah. cut. Looking hands up, looking for the ball. And it's just what Wyoming needed as Wisconsin had it under double digits. Crowd back all over it. Banks goes for the rim. No good. Sisk, McGuffey, two. And the Cowgirls start to stretch it back out. And how long do you leave Anderson out? How long do you leave Dunham out? If you're Lisa Stone. Crowd looking for that final push that will make them comfortable with the margin. The Badgers still working hard. Shot blocked by Rebecca Vanderjack off the hand of Caitlin Gibson, and the Cowgirls come away with it. Three for Pajemska. Missed it. Good board there. Good box out by Caitlin Gibson, the sophomore. 6-4. Jefferson, Wisconsin is where she hails from. Well, Pajemska really not having her best game. 
She doesn't need to. McGuffey having a great game. Bowler Jack coming to play. Zavek starting to hit it. Sis throwing in some contributions. Vandiver. Another shot blocked down low as Tia Gant tried to score. We're under six minutes to go. It's been a long run here. Three players waiting to check in for the Badgers. Danielle Ward sitting along court side, along with Mariah Dunham and Jolene Anderson, but they can't get a stop to get back in the game. Jemska drives this time. She's fouled. I like Pojemska. Didn't see her shot open from the outside. Drew a mismatch, penetrated. She's going to get some opportunities at the line. Time out on the floor. And Wyoming back up by 13 in the WNIT championship game. Thad Anderson and Tracy Warren back at the Arena Auditorium where they're dancing the Cotton Eye Joe and breaking a few ankles, but they don't care. Their team's up by 13. The Cowgirls of Wyoming from the Mountain West Conference trying to win their first ever postseason WNIT championship. Basketball, baseball, fast pitch, and slow pitch softball. College placement. No home cooking, no agendas, just professionally organized events in great destination locations. Triple Crown Sports, putting players in the game since 19. 82 triple crown sports.com proud to present the WNIT well Tracy it's uh, been an interesting ride the last few minutes but all things said and done Wisconsin probably isn't as close as they wish they were right now but they have reloaded as Pojemska uh, gets her opportunities at the line because Dunham back in the game Anderson back in the game Wisconsin's got their scores and they've got five minutes 40 seconds to get this done and again, they've trailed before in the WNIT. It's a question if they can do it in this altitude with this crowd against a team that doesn't quit in Wyoming. Cowgirls now 11 of 14 from the free throw line for 79% doing the job at the stripe. Leading by 15. Shot too strong, comes off loose. Joey Anderson battling in the lane with Jody Bolojack and the arrow to the Cowgirls. You know, Anderson giving Ward a look. Probably not the best shot to take with plenty of time left on the shot clock and Ward being the big six foot four inch. When she shoots from that far out, she takes her height out of the rebounding game. Got to be efficient on your possessions from here on in if you're Wisconsin. Pajemska up top, guarded by Danielle Ward. But you know, you talk to Lisa Stone and you say, how did you, how did you scout Wyoming? And she says, it's to so tough to scout this team because Joe Ligurski has his team. Everybody will shoot a three except for maybe one or two players. Everybody will penetrate. Everybody reads and reacts. And oh, by the way, when they get to the line, they make those two. Four personal fouls now for Jolene Anderson. Front end of the one and one is missed by Megan McGuffey, but she's going to get another chance. Lane violation. And McGuffey will start over. Jolene Anderson, as I just mentioned, four fouls. About five minutes to go. Just run it until the tank's empty. Front end missed. Jolene Anderson is there for the rebound. Got to set up some screens for Anderson or Dunham. They've got to play a two-person game. Inside goes Dunham. And again on the offensive glass, Janice Banks. Foul down low by the Cowgirls. You know, some of the players in the NBA wear mouth guards. Some of the players in the WNBA wear mouth guards. Maybe Wyoming wants to invest in some mouth guards because Bowler Jack right here is going to take just an arm and get one in the mouth. But Wisconsin being aggressive with Banks taking it to the hole. Megan McGuffey, third personal foul. Janice Banks at the line. Janice Banks was number four in the Big Ten overall in offensive rebounding, just over three per game. One of the better offensive rebounders, along with number six in the Big Ten in scoring, Janice Banks. Just hit her free throws. Good job at the line. Wisconsin now 7 of 12 from the free throw line. Not the right number, but the right trend there with a couple knocked down by Banks. Sisk has it up top to Pajemska. And you want to see Pajemska kind of hit one from three-point land. Very unselfish play. She and McGuffey have a great give and go, and the timing 
is just there. 25 to 24 means two points for Wyoming. Megan McGuffey's cuts have been phenomenal today. She's found herself wide open a handful of times by staying active. The rebound to the Cowgirls, ticking down toward four minutes. It's a 15-point basketball game. I really like the game of Megan McCuffey. She's a hometown favorite, three-time All-State in high school, but she has energized this team when they need a basket. She finds the right cut. She's working the boards. She's playing very aggressive basketball. Eight points for McGuffey on four of six shooting. Her brother Court was a star quarterback at the University of Northern Colorado. For the family that uh, contributed to the college at second around the air. Basket for the Dow girls as Rebecca Vanderjack pulls the glass and puts it back. And Dunham that, sticks with it and scores. And Dunham did a great job. She took her players right to the hole, kept going in, cutting down, cutting down. 30-second timeout called by Wisconsin. Take a look at Mariah Dunham, just a freshman, but she's going to go ahead and take Pajemska to the glass. Cutting down the distance, cutting the angle. Okay, now it's a seven-footer. I'm going to knock it down. But this was great. She said, I'm going to make this one-on-one. -on -one. This is going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to take the taller Pajemska to the hole. Great job. A lot of times you see a younger player able to get to the basket but not finish. Good touch on the shot, laid it in from the right baseline. Amazing the, amount, the number of freshmen we keep referring to. Both these teams are loaded for the upcoming seasons. One of the probably most appropriate little slogans of the WNIT is who's next? Because what you're seeing is teams who are going to be on the scene for a couple of years. Wyoming, for one, was disappointed at the end of the year that they missed out on the NCAA tournament. But Coach Ligurski said that went away quickly when we got to start playing the WNIT. Extend our experience, get our young players more of this big-time environment, host these games, and get this crowd. Same thing for Wisconsin. Great opportunity for some seasoning. Yeah, you got to think both of these teams, so very young, six juniors for Wyoming, seven freshmen for Wisconsin. you got to think they're working their way to the NCAA tournament next year under three minutes to go shot clock down to four seconds Pajemska down. big shot for Ustena Pajemska it's an 18 point lead for the Cowgirls of Wyoming Wyoming basketball. out of bounds it goes it is Wyoming basketball after a timeout, the Cowgirls back up by 18 points. This is the WNIT championship game from Laramie, Wyoming. Southwest Host Services, a proud partner of the WNIT nationwide team travel since 1991. Southwesthost.com. Thank you, Southwest Host Services, for your support of the travel plan to get the WNIT accomplished. Well, a humongous crowd, the second largest ever in WNIT history at 15,462, is having a good time with their team up by 18 here at the University of Wyoming. Wisconsin has to be very efficient with the basketball. You see they've just got one timeout left and under two and a half to go right now. So they need some defensive stops and try and cut into that Wyoming lead. What an outstanding job for Wyoming. Another cut by McGuffey, another basket by McGuffey. She has been the eye of the storm here. Every time things start to kind of get noisy around her, Pajemska maybe not hitting, Zavik not hitting, McGuffey comes through. Basket by Janice Banks for the Badgers. Megan McGuffey now with 10 points in the game, eight of those in the second half, and there are now four Cowgirls in double-figure scoring. Pajemska and Bowler Jack with 16 points each. And the line right now for Ustena Pajemska, 16 points, nine rebounds, seven assists. It is tough to defend a team that shoots 47% from the field. Wyoming shot 47% against Kansas State in the triple overtime. They're shooting 47% now. It is really tough to beat a team when they play as balanced as the Cowgirls do. Jolene Anderson wisely looking for quick points, got it back and kept it alive after her shot and a foul here. Badgers free throws upcoming. I
to know who sold everybody these t-shirts to get Wyoming fans ready for this game because that's a lot of t-shirts going out in a couple day period. They are fanatical out here in Laramie. Megan McGuffey the foul four personals for McGuffey. Everybody dressed in yellow and brown or gold and brown having that cowgirl fever. And who knew they would be winning the WNIT in such convincing fashion. Look at the round of applause for Rebecca Vanderjack, who got some good minutes in today's game. She checks out, and I think we might start seeing curtain calls. Coach Ligurski is a guy who just knows how to run a program, knows how to treat people right. I wouldn't be surprised here if we start hearing some serious noise, unless Wisconsin can get a couple buckets and keep this thing where the nails might be bitten just a little bit down the stretch. On the other hand, Lisa Stone, fiery coach, great program for Wisconsin. They've done an outstanding job and had a marvelous run in this WNIT. And I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of them in postseason play in years to come under Lisa Stone. One minute remaining now, under one minute. This crowd will probably not cease to go nuts for the last minute. Well, there they will as they're making the guppy goes down. Moment of concern. Jolene Anderson is fouled. Goes down hard on her tailbone. And the foul to Hannah Zavek. That's five personal fouls for Zavek. And take a listen when Zavek checks out of this. Just take a, a hear here. What a fantastic season. What a great player. The team security blanket is one way she is referred to. Hannah Zavik just checked out with her fifth foul. The ladder just went running by us to prepare for the net cutting session here in a few minutes. 46.7 seconds left. It's a 17 point lead for Wyoming. As Jolene Anderson hits that free throw, she's going to check out. And great year for Jolene Anderson. She's replaced by Sarah Ingeson. What a fantastic player on the flip side over there. She's not happy as the junior checks out of this game knowing that the championship has gotten away from the Badgers but what an amazing player what a great year in the Big Ten Anderson has has it all and the fact that she's coming back for one more year for the Badgers and Lisa Stone I mean four juniors on the squad will look for the Badgers in a very tough Big Ten conference but hats off to Wyoming an outstanding game plan balanced attack great crowd support Wyoming hosting their sixth game of the WNIT. They did not draw a bye, but they have won six games here at the Arena Auditorium, beating the WAC, the Big 12, the Pac-10, the independent team in South Dakota State, another Big 12 team, and now the Big 10. So taking on all comers, shot clock violation. Ball goes to Wisconsin with 15.9 remaining, and this is going to wind it up. Here comes a sub for the Cowgirls. Checking in is Amy Bowler Jack, sister of Jody, and she's replacing Megan McGuffey. Also in for Wyoming, number 21, Angia Harris. For Ustena Pochenska. Meanwhile, Janice Banks checking out for Wisconsin. Great year for Janice Banks. Congratulations to the Badgers on a great run for the WNIT. Down to 10 seconds now. Joe Ligurski, the first crowds were 200, now they're 15,000. And a first ever WNIT championship. And these are asking, what's next for this team? There goes Dominique Sis, joined by Jody Bowlerjack. Jody was huge in the first half and might have been one of the keys to this Wyoming win. That was a huge part of the ball game. Megan Mordecai and Mallory Klein checked in. Here goes the clock, here's the championship.
Star Tribune, hot off the presses, already handed out. You see the newspapers floating around the building. Champions of the WNIT, the University of Wyoming Cowgirls. They end up 27 and 9 this year, a program record for wins in a season by a long way. And Wyoming finishes strong and sets up the next round of basketball for this program. They are poised to go everywhere from here. It's really great when it comes all together for a coach like Joe Ligurski. They had the physical tools, they had the great players, and Hanna Zalbeck, Senna Pajemska, they had the great compliments, and Jody Bowlerjack, and Megan McGuffey, Dominique Sisk, Elizabeth Disson, but they also had the great discipline. They never gave up. They went through a triple overtime with Kansas State, and at any time, they could have called it a day. They did not. Wisconsin made a big run early on. scoring attack they held on and that's a credit to a well disciplined and well coached wyoming squad earlier in the game during a crowd interview that jamie carey conducted senator alan simpson mentioned that there is only one four-year institution in this state and you can see right here one of the outcomes of that the state is all about the university of wyoming they back it they support it and this is huge for the fans of wyoming you see the players getting their Congratulations from just about everybody. Audrey Vandiver checking through. Rebecca Vander Jack played some good minutes and got a big round of applause as she checked out. Earlier you saw Megan McGuffey in there. Just a great story. A lot of Wyoming kids got a chance to be big in this game. Megan McGuffey was one of them. Audrey Vandiver from Laramie, another one of them. And there's Coach Joe Ligurski, a graduate of the University of Wyoming in 1979. And he said it the other day, nothing better than gathering here in this state with everybody focused on the university, the kind of support they get. And the job he's done after spending 12 years in Utah, now four seasons, he said he had a five-year vision of where they wanted to be. Well, in four years, they've won the WNIT championship. And the Cowgirls are what it's all about in Wyoming today. Congratulations to the champions. Congratulations to Wisconsin on a fantastic season, 23-13 and 13 record. We'll be back with more from the Arena Auditorium in Laramie, Wyoming. Anderson and Tracy Warren, along with Jamie Carey, wrapping it up from Laramie, Wyoming. Floor being cleared for the trophy presentation, and everybody's interested in being a part of that. The ladders are out. The nets will be cut down today in Wyoming. And Tracy, you've seen a lot of basketball this year. I know you work all over the place. How about the atmosphere here today? Well, it's nice to win a championship for the team, but it's even better to win it for a city. And you see the entire city of Laramie embracing the Cowgirls. It makes the victory that much more special, one that they can talk about for years, an entire team effort. But it really started grassroots, and it really has come to fruition for the people of Laramie. And they're going to enjoy it, as they should today. Jolene Anderson, the game-high scorer from the Badgers, 21 points today for Anderson another fine performance by the junior also 13 points for Mariah Dunham and 12 points scored today by Janice Banks three players in double figures for the Badgers of Wisconsin but the Cowgirls take the crown four players in double digits led by Jody Bowler Jack with 16 and Ustena Pajemska with 16 also 10 rebounds and eight assists double double for Pajemska 12 points for Hannah Zavik and 10 points for Megan McGuffey. Four in double figures today for the Cowgirls. We're looking at scenes from the celebration on the court here at the Arena Auditorium as the Cowgirls have won the WNIT championship game with a final score of 72 to 56 over Wisconsin. And from your Wyoming Cowgirls, Jody Bolger. All tournament team being announced. 
Jody Buller Jack stepping out to take her hardware. What a great game to Jody Buller Jack, the junior from Columbia, Missouri. She had the best one game field goal percentage game in the NCAA this year. Hit 10 of 10 shots back on November 15th against Northern Colorado. And Hannah Zavik takes home the big hardware from the honors of the tournament. There you see Hannah. She came out of the Australian Institute of Sport from Melbourne, Australia. First team all Mountain West Conference this year. Team trophies coming up next. And early on, Wisconsin countered in the first few minutes. Wyoming took that surge. It looked like it might be what you kind of feared would happen if you're on the road against this kind of a, a situation. Wisconsin hung in that first chunk of the first half, but the close of the first half, it was a 17 to 6 run to close out the first half. A lot of that fueled by Jody Bullerjack. Second half, a few spurts for Wisconsin. They really stuck it in there and played well. Just never were able to get back over that hump that was built in the first half. Dominique Sisk holding the trophy for the Cowgirls of Wyoming. Look at some of the action from today's WNIT championship game. My thanks to Tracy Warren and Jamie Carey for their help on the broadcast today. Southwest Host Services and Vista Travel along with Triple Crown Sports for their support of the women's NIT. Congratulations to the Cowgirls from the University of Wyoming champions today, 72 to 56. I'm Thad Anderson. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations, Cowgirls.